Hello everyone. So we're going to be going over chapter three here, which is the offensive zone entries. So before we go into this, I want you guys to think about a couple questions. So what is offensive zone entries? What, how does it help us ensure scoring opportunities? How does it ensure us puck possession in the offensive zone? So throughout this chapter, before we go into it, you need to understand the first two chapters that we built upon. So chapter one is the breakouts, getting out of the zone successfully. And chapter two is the counters and regroups in the neutral zone. So you guys need to understand that before going into this chapter. So think about what those mean, those questions. What is the purpose of offensive zone entries? That's the main key here. So what are offensive zone entries? So offensive zone entries, is a system we use to enter the offensive zone successfully. And offensive zone entry is a key strategy for generating successful scoring opportunities. So if we don't use zone entries that we practice and practice and don't use them in games, guess what? We're not going to score. We're not going to get scoring opportunities. We're not going to get shots in it because guess what? We'll turn over a bunch of turnovers at the blue line and the opposition will come back and get a good scoring chance on us. And we don't want that to happen. And entering the zone and control of the puck is every player's goal. So you've got to want to bring the puck in the zone. Now, you cannot be puck hogging all the time, but you got to pass the puck as well. But we all want to enter the offensive zone. We do not want to go back in our defensive zone because if that happens, guess what? If we're not motivated to get in the offensive zone, we are going to get crushed, and we don't want to do that. Another goal is not turning the puck over when entering the offensive zone, which I just said here couple times we cannot turn over the puck at the offensive zone like I say if you're pressured you can dump it in you can rim it in like the practice like the plays we will be discussing in further chapters in the four check use that four check to get in the zone puck possession is key to play hockey at high level and enjoyment of the game puck possession it says is key it is puck possession we have to have puck possession to score right if we don't have the puck we're not going to score um, if we don't have the puck, guess what? We are in big trouble. We're going to get a lot of shots against us, and we're going to be in our defensive zone most of the game. And when the puck is turned over in the offensive zone, the opposing team can counter quickly and create outnumbered attacks. So what that means is when we turn over the puck, they come in our zone, and they can set up easily if we're not ready. So like what we talked about, those regroups and counters, too, we got to be prepared uh, to come back in the zone. And the defensive zone, which we'll talk about in further chapter in a couple chapters, uh, we, we will be talking about how to cover the defensive zone. Like we said, we explained a little bit in the breakout, like how to cover the defensive zone, the points, the wings, middle, etc. So we got to understand that we have to carry the puck in the offensive zone and make sure it's on our stick. We cannot give it to the other team. I mean, we can make passes if lanes are open, but we cannot give the puck to the other team. So one offensive zone entry is a cross ice dumping. So it works under condu two conditions. So the D pressure is red and the offensive team is changing. So what this happens, okay, um, we either change, so the D have to read that pressure that's coming towards them. And our team has to change to get the puck, okay? So for an example, okay, F2 in this scenario, okay, dumping the puck and probably going to make a change, and then F1's coming off the bench and going to get the puck. And the defensive, the defensive pressure is red, and offensive support player is skating in the wide lane. So in this thing, too, is so F2 skates over the – over the red line, excuse me, dumps it into that corner, bounces off, F1, go gets it. That's one of the four checking systems we can use too. Um, when the team is changing, we got to make sure we have players on the ice too. We can't just, now if we're really tired, we can dump it in and get a change. We got to be prepared to go back for them to come back on us. But in this scenario, F2 crosses the red line, dumps that puck in, hits the boards, F1 skates as hard as he or she can and go gets it. Um, and hit, hits the boards halfway between the net and side boards and then angles away from the goalie towards half boards. You do not want to put it exactly on the goalie because they could, that goalie could cause help that breakout for the, our opponents and they can come down our end. So we want to make sure this cross ice dump in is in that corner. F1 go gets it and they've set up a play there. 
then rims, like we talked about. What are rims? It's a second tactic when the offensive player with puck, possession of the puck reads pressure. So rims, um, it's like going around the boards like we talked about earlier. Okay, so we talked about this plenty of times. So rims are just not shooting a puck in as hard as you can, but just like shooting it around the boards a little bit. Make sure it's on the boards. Okay. Player entering the zone senses that their teammate is skating wide can retrieve the puck and can rim it around the board. So in this scenario, okay, we have F3 with the puck skating in, dumping it around the boards, okay? Acknowledging, so before he or she dumps that, you've got to make sure someone's on that far boards over there. And if so, you can use the rim play. So you can cross the red line, dump it in, F1 go gets it, and F2 goes in here to the high slot. So F3 would go crash the net as well um, because F2 will be in that high slot here. So that pressures your D to get back and focus on that puck because if we dump that puck in, guess what? These D are going to be focused on that puck. It leaves F3 wide open to go to the net. F1 gets the puck and make a play. Um, F2 is in the high slot. Uh, distracting the D, and if those D open up, we can pass it to F2. Most rims are stopped by goalies behind the net, so you got to be careful with that. So you got to shoot it hard. I mean, you can't shoot it like going out of our zone. You got to make sure it has enough pressure that it doesn't get stopped by the goalie. Um, and usually it's stopped right here by the goalie. They go behind the net as quick as they can, they can stop it. We want it to pass that so F1 can get that puck. And before using the rim, you have to under, we have to understand the opposition goalie. And if he or she isn't mobile or is poor at trapping the puck off the rim, we will use it. So if we see that the goalie on the other team is not handling pucks very well, not making good passes, can't catch the puck, we will use that a lot. And us coaches will tell you guys when to use it, and you got to acknowledge the fact, too. We'll be watching the game, let you know you got to be paying attention as well. And goalies that are weak, at this causes a lot of turnovers, which provides a scoring chance. So just for an example, if they stop here, they get the puck, they could pass it. So we're putting pressure. F3 is going to put pressure. F1 is going to put pressure if the goalie stops. And guess what? The puck most likely will come to us, and then we have the high slot. So we could either come out if it goes over here, F3, and get the puck, we could pass the high slot, boom, or F3 could take it to the net for a rebound for F1 to get it, et cetera, on the same side. So F1 could get it pass a high slot, boom, or shoot off the rebound, get up to F3 and end. So we got to be aware about the goalies in this scenario. We got to make sure if they're strong, we probably we won't use this play as much, but if they're very weak, we can use this a lot to use that pressure. So chips. So the chip tactic is used in many different areas of the game. And chips are banking the puck off the board to the space behind a def defender. So like what we talked about, okay, it's like this. Okay, so they could either, so if the D's right here on the other team, okay, we're right here, okay, he or she comes up, bank off the board, you could chip it in. Or you could just chip it in right here, okay, you could, do that slap pass off the boards, or you can just chip it in. You usually just want to flip it in a little bit. And it puts puck, the puck in a better offensive position behind the pressing defender because if you, when you get that speed, like we talked about, if you accelerate and gain that speed in our defensive zone, you're going to beat the defender there. And that will allow us to gain puck possession and we can set up in the offensive zone. And the goal of the chip is puck placement. So we want to ensure we know we got to understand where we're chipping the puck at so that way our player we can all set up in our positions and get ready for a scoring opportunity and it forces him or her to turn and try to catch the offensive player which is the defender in this case so the d is going to have a tough time on the other team because we're accelerating with that speed we're putting on that high tempo for checking pressure and they're going to struggle they're going to be chasing us mostly so they won't be in position, so we got to ensure, you know, where our open lanes are so we can pass that puck or even skate into. Because offensive players are moving forward with speed, with supporting teammates, the defender is caught in a difficult position. So, like I just talked about, speed is the most important thing. We have to use our speed to set up and generate opportunities, and that will make the defensive team slow down a lot. It develops opportunity for puck possession deeper in the offensive zone, like we talked about with the forecheck. 
And there's two options for retrieval if the puck is, you know, to gain the puck. That's what retrieval means, to get, gain puck possession. So number one, we could chip the puck and have the same player retrieve it. So like what we just talked about, we could have, there's a cut, I think there's diagrams coming up here we'll talk about. So here's that forward, right? Like we talked about, could chip it in, F this forward go gets it. Okay. And it's chipped into the space behind the D and I have a teammate pick it up. So for an example, here's another forward. Okay. F1 just dumps it in. F2, they need to communicate with each other. F2 may have to go in. F may have to support. So that might how it works. It just depends. And through the second one, with the D1 where the teammate go gets the puck, it needs to be used when the puck carrier has no room to carry the puck into the offensive zone. So if we don't have this, the chips are used to, to dump the puck in. Now if we have room to walk in, we need to do that. But if we have room, we cannot, we shouldn't be using the chip. We should bring in the puck and setting it up, our offensive strategy. And here's a couple of systems, chip systems, okay? So like we talked about. So off the boards, okay? So F3 skates in, okay, D2 is pressuring our forward, so we're gonna chip it off those boards and in, and F1 is gonna go get the puck, and then F3 is gonna come in and support, okay? Um, it could be another one too. Um, maybe, you know, F3 maybe go gets the puck, okay? F3, excuse me, I'm sorry. These are two different. Okay, F3, okay, skates across the red line. He dumps it in, goes, chases it, goes around the D, gets that puck. F1's there to support, okay? And they'll have to set up from there. Now the one where it says where the teammate go gets the puck, F2 skates, or F2 skates in, okay, dumps it in, and then F1, as soon as he or she dumps it, has to go get that puck before that D can get there. I mean, they're going to struggle, they're going to lose some balance, and eventually some speed in this. So I'll explain this again. F2 will come in, dump that puck in, stay up high here, F1 go gets that puck. And we had the mid-ice entry, which is the open ice hit. Now, we don't hit in our lead, like I talked about. We, we can't use checking, but we'll use this example so you guys understand. So this occurs when the players are carrying a puck into the middle of the ice on off offensive zone entries. So usually our D want to make sure they're, or our offensive players want to make sure they're putting pressure on their D, okay? Um, and our D, our, their D are going to try to make that check if you run into them. And using the mid-ice space to pass it off to teammates coming from behind the play with speed. So we have to use that, okay? We have to generate speed like we talked about. Like, we see how this is building upon chapters. We have to use that speed coming from the neutral zone and the defensive zone in order to get a fast pace and puck possession in the offensive zone. And this says this system is exceptional when executed properly because back speed, uh, players moving behind the puck carry with more speed than the puck carrier can completely catch defenders off guard. So like I say, we're gonna repeat this three times. Speed catches D off guard. Speed catches D off guard. Speed catches D off guard. So we need to understand speed is what we need. So I'll explain this to you here. Okay, so F2 comes in, okay, that D is going to step up and make that hit right there. So I'm going to turn, come up, make that hit, okay. Now, that, that will lead that puck, that's a good play, because F3 can come in, okay, and gain that puck. F1 goes in a little bit, and when F2 gets up, stays up high here to support. So D is going to make that hit, make that play, and here, whatever forwards, Right here, whoever's closer, so the puck's on the side, F3 is going to have to go in and get it, okay? Or F2 can make that quick pass, make the play, they can draw this D out. So if that happens, uh, either both sides here, so F2 can make that quick pass before getting hit, so D's coming up, make that pass, F3's in, along with the goalie, uh, especially on this side too. Um, can pass it over here and come in a two on, can pass it to F1 over here and that make that D stumble and they could come and possibly a two on one or a two on O. It just depends how fast that D is, but mostly it's going to be a two on O because the D will have a hard time catching back because they didn't generate that enough speed and they didn't use their 
crossovers or anything like that. They haven't accelerated that yet. So we had the mid ice entry, which is the backside pass. So this is the most difficult to execute and it requires more skill, but it, it, it's always the most effective. And players carry it across the middle of the offensive zone just inside the blue line and then pass back towards space where they can come. They, can, they came from to a player with a vertical speed. Uh, so what this means, okay, is you just come in the blue line, okay? You have to carry it in the middle of the offensive zone just inside the blue line and then pass it back to the forward with speed, okay? Uh, and it's, this is very effective because it, it comes from shifting defenders sideways with the puck, which opens up space for the player on the backside to enter the zone. So I'll explain this here, okay? So we have F1 on the fire boards over here, F2, okay? So F2, F3 is gonna come over here, okay? While F2, they do a crisscross, F3's gotta enter the puck first. So F3's and this goal is trying to make this D think, well, he or she's going inside. So that's gonna help that D make that tight gap. Then you have F2, F3 is gonna make that pass and F2 can come right in and get a shot while F1 goes for back door. Now you might have that D, that D's not gonna be prepared for that. So it could be, again, a two on one or a two on oh. But this will trick this D to get out of the play because this D1 is thinking F3 is going in with the puck. So it's gonna draw attention to F3 and F2 picks up that puck when it passed to F3 and F3 is in for a good shot or a good rebound shot to F1. So we had the mid, mid lane ladder play. So in this play, F1 drives across the line through the middle and bumps the puck to the outside player stationary at the blue line, which is F2. Um, F1 continues to drive the net and it's very important. We drive the net, okay? We can't just stay still. We always have to keep our feet moving. We have to be towards the net to put that puck in. And this frees up space and time for F2 to make a shot to, to take a shot or make a play. F2 can shoot with F1 screening the goalie, pass across to F3, or hit late move, hit, hit late D1 moving in. So like I said, we don't want to hit, we, we're not allowed to hit, so we're going to have to forecheck and pin. Um, if no options are available, F2 can lay the puck behind the net, F1 for low puck possession. And it develops a lot of defensive coverage confusion for the opponents because that will make this play will make them chase us very much and they get out of position. We have more passing lanes and then we can get more shooting lanes in as well. So in this play, I'll give you an example. So F1, okay, where's my thing here? There we go. F1, okay, you're going to take that puck in first before anyone crosses the blue line, okay? F1's going to make that quick pass. So as soon as he or she makes that pass, F1 will drive to that net. Okay, F2 is going to skate make a stop, curl, okay? So F2 has two options like we just described. Can take a shot or make a play. So can take the shot right there for a rebound for F1 while F1's going to the net. Or F2 can make that nice pass over to F3 and guess what, all forwards move in, but we gotta be careful. Um, F2, it will be usually in this play, if it goes to F3, F1 will go to the net and F3 will go with him or her, and then F2 will have to come up here to the high slot. Um, but we gotta be digging for that puck. Um, what this means is even F2 could make a play, come over here behind the net, make that play to F3. So we have a lot of options available. And we had the mid lane drives. And this is the most utilized offensive zone entry. So space is often available to the puck carrier. And when the puck carry enters the zone, he or she may have the option to dive deep or drive deep, excuse me, go around the defenseman or behind the net. And DR are usually intimidated by speed and want to protect space inside. So usually they get often confused when we use our speed. And this gives us more room on the outside and try to cut the puck carrier off deeper in the zone. Uh, puck carrier may give delay by driving deep and cutting the ice or driving and cutting inside. It's important to read options quickly when entering the zone because if we're not reading and acknowledging that play, guess what? We're not going to know what we're going to do and we're going to cause turnovers and we won't be in the offensive zone long. So we got to be battling there and thinking about what plays fit best in our scenario and we got to think about that during the game. 
and the puck carrier needs to go wide and recognize where the open space is. So we can't, the puck carrier cannot be going through where the D is because we're going to cause turnovers and he or she will probably get hit. And um, even though we're not allowed to hit happens, uh, we don't want that because that causes a turnover. So let's just take a look. Okay. So F1. Come on. There we go. So F1. Okay, skating at the puck. Acting like. Okay, F acting like. So they're going to cut. So F1's coming in so they can act like two different things. Okay, so F1 could go around it, be drive the net over here, go in. Or F1 can come across, cut, and go in from there. Or F1 can come down, turn a circle, and play, make a play here. So it just depends on the situation. And that D is going to be very cautious. So we have three options to do here. And we can use one of them, whatever fits best. So usually a lot of them like to cut here, trick that play, and get that D off guard. And then they go in for a breakaway. F1 likes to go in wide just to get that rebound shot for F2 or F3 to come in and put home. Or F1 likes to take the time and to just make that delay little turn and get everyone in the offensive zone to make that play and in, involving everybody. And then we have the funnel. So what the funnel is, it's a philosophy that simpli simplifies the offense into a couple of simple ideas. So it gets the puck to the net through traffic very quickly. And one player carries the puck down on top of the offensive faceoff circles. And you have to place the puck toward the front of the net because someone's going to be there to tip it or screen it. Screen the goalie and eventually tip it or get a rebound off that. And the other two forwards should not be looking for an open pass. They should be driving the net. So in this scenario, we shouldn't be passing too much in this play. We should be shooting the puck. So let's take a look. So let's just say F3 is puck. Okay, so F3 is skating in, and then F3 comes in, then F1 and F2. So F2 can come in, okay, drive that net right there. F1 comes in this position. So let's take a look. We have a couple options. So F3 can come in, make a little fake pass to F2, put it in, or can put it off the goalie's right pad here, and F1 can slam it in, or F3 could just put it to the net and everybody dicks. It just depends on the situation. But we have the funnel with an offensive defenseman. So D can be involved in this as well. So a an offensive defenseman is a defenseman that carries a puck in the offensive zone and places the puck toward the front of the net. And it frees up all of three offensive forwards to skate in the prime position and jump on a loose play on alley loose pucks to develop second shots. So with the D's help in this, we can get more than two shots or so. That way we're jamming, we're getting rebounds, we're putting the pressure on. And the main objective is on this play with the D is to hit the net, develop a rebound for the players going to the net. So we want to hit that net. We don't want to put it up top. That will cause a turnover, and then they'll come back on a two-on-one -on -one or something like that. And we want to cause a rebound because those goalies, a lot of goalies let up rebounds depending on their control, how they do with that. But uh, it will trick them. That way we make a quick play and put it in the net. And it activates mid-ice defensemen. So let's take a look. So here's our offensive defenseman, F1, F2, F3, and then we'll have to have a D stay back here, obviously. So F, offensive defenseman will come in, take a shot off the goalie. F2 can either, number one, yep, F2 or F1 can get that rebound. It just depends who where that puck is. So if the puck goes over here, F1 can jam it home. If F if the puck goes in here from that shot from the offensive defenseman, F2 can jam at home, and F3 will be there to support. So F, in this case, the offensive defenseman wants to hit that right pad off the goalie. So F1 or F2 can retrieve it and make a rebound, and F3 is there to support and jam that puck. And we have two-on-one attacks. So players need to act quickly with speed. And it's very important to attack with speed so the back checkers don't catch the players and nullify the odd man rush. So it's very, we have to really attack with speed because those back checkers are going to be coming back quick and we don't want that puck taken away from us. So we have to skate as hard as we can in the offensive zone. And if there's, if there's a way wide two on one, the players should try to get closer to the mid ice right away because guess what? That D will get caught off guard and we can move in and get that rebound shot or just put that perfect play shot. 
and we can get the puck in a triple threat position. So this is when the puck carrier keeps the puck at their side in shooting position so that he or she can either pass, shoot, or make, or make a move. So we have to keep the puck at the side in the shooting position, okay? So we cannot be pass, we, we, we cannot be screwing around with the puck. We can make a pass, shoot, or make a move. And the puck carrier needs to read how the defenseman and the goalie might play the situation and pick the best option. So we got to we got to be aware uh, what the goalie is thinking, and it's hard to do that. But we got to be aware because we want to catch that goalie off guard in the D because they're gonna think something. We got to read what they're thinking, and then we have to go opposite what we're thinking to generate that opportunity. And the second offensive player needs to have have to stick in a position to shoot or deflect the puck into the net. So I'll explain this. Okay. Mom, sorry, my mouse sometimes. So while I get this to work, okay, so we have F1 skating and with the puck, okay. Now we're catching that D off guard, skating in wide, using that speed, and F2 is coming in with a bunch of speed and pass it over, could take a shot for a rebound, so F1 can get it, or F2 can place that perfect shot, or they can make a pass-pass play. So it just depends on the situation. So we can either do this. I'll explain it again. F1 can come in, make that pass. F2 comes in with speed, takes the shot, and either for that shot can make a perfect play set for the goalie to hold the puck, or F2 can shoot off that left pad for F1 to get a rebound, or F1 and F2 can come in and pass, 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 and make that play to get the goalie caught off guard and make a move or her move. And then we have the two-on-two -two crisscross, which is a two-on-two -two attack. Uh, so the puck carrier, which is F1, crisscrosses with F2 and isolates one of the defensemen on the other team. And crisscrosses create a lateral move that develops a sense of uncertainty in the defender's mind. So they're not going to know where you're going, the D. They're going to end up being confused with those crisscrosses. Um, and they're not, you know, they're going to be moving with you and paying attention. And that catches them off position and we can make that play. Um, and the key is for the player with puck initiating lateral movement and being closest to the D. So we want to be close to that D so that way we can end up getting them caught off guard and they're going to not know what's going on and they're going to get caught off balance. And the player without the puck crosses in the opposite direction behind the puck carrier. And allow, we have to allow the puck carrier to make a decision so that way he or, he or she will go. So what this means is we have to let whoever has the puck is going to make the decision. We have to follow that decision. We have to acknowledge what that decision is. Okay, so let's just say, okay, so we have F2 in the scenario, okay. Oop, let me go back. Excuse me. So we have F2 with the puck skating in, okay, crossing in wide, okay, then F1 or F2 skating in while F1 crosses in with the puck, okay. So we're going to isolate one of these. So F1 is going to come through this middle here. Okay. So that D is going to end up getting caught off guard. Then F2 is going to come across here. So we could either make that pass in and go in or F2 is there for the rebound and to dig in. So F1 is carrying that puck in, going through the middle, taking the shot. And if there's nothing here, F2 can be here to support or stay up here high. So it just depends. So F3 in this scenario, too, would have to stay up here. F2, F2 would come in wide, get that defender off guard, and then go to the net and jam for the puck and using that speed. So F1 and F2 are using that speed. F1's taking that shot, and F2's coming in and making sure there's a loose rebound and making sure there's support for F1. Now we have the two-on-two -two mid lane drive. And so this is where the player off the puck, which is F2, drives through the middle of the 2D. And we have to allow F1 to cross in deep from behind. And we have to be executed just inside the blue line. So the player without the puck doesn't go offside. So remember, the puck carrier has to go in first before anyone else can go in the offensive zone. And driving between the D develops a brief hesitation by D playing F1. And by this, it allows, it allows our F1 time and space to cross shoot and make a play. So I'll explain this here. So F1 is puck, okay, so F1's going to act like he or she's coming in, then we'll turn quickly, okay, we'll skate, make that pass to F2, and F2 is coming in along with that puck, and that D is trying to get back. So F2 is generating that speed, so F1 crossing the blue line first, we'll make a little zigzag coming in, and then we'll make that pass to F2 that's coming in, F2 will get that shot, and F1 will stay up high, 
or if F3 is here, then F1 goes down there and supports. And then we have the two on two double drive, which is the two on two attacks. So in this play, um, F1 lays the puck to F3 in space behind the defenseman. The F2 moves to that space on the inside shoulder of the defending defenseman. And F1 may choose to shoot off the drive as F2 goes to the net for the rebound. So I'll show you here. Okay, so F1 lays the puck to F3. Okay. So let's take a look. So F1 can either, okay, so F1 comes in, we'll make a pass back to that F3 that's behind him or her, or F1 can come in the same way, uh, take the shot for off that pad, that left pad, and get that and forward two can get that for a rebound, or F2, F1 can come and make that pass to F2 and get that quick shot. So we have a bunch of options there. And then we had the three on two high triangle. So this, the attacking team wants to force the D to play man on man with one player and isolate other two D on one. So if we get one guy, one man or what would attracted, uh, the other are going to be paying attention to that and we can get them off guard and we can space from there. And from this, F1 drives wide behind with the puck. F3 drives wide without the puck. And the F2 trails looking for a pass from F1. And the options that are available after this from F2 trailing looking for a puck is F1. So F1 from here can make a pass to F3 to shoot and create a rebound for F3 or pass back to F2 from a shot from the high slot. So I'll show you here. And key, the, the key for the four, F1 is whether the opposing D goes with F3 on a wide drain and it indicates what opens. So D, that D will go with that F3, it just depends. So I'll show you the plays here. Okay, so F1 drives wide with the puck, okay? And F3 is driving wide to the net without the puck. So F1's coming and so, F2 trips, okay? So F1 from here is gonna make that pass to F2. So F2 has two options, so, uh, or excuse me, F2 trails looking to pass from F1. So F2 could take that shot from the high slot like it says here, okay? Or F1 can come in, make that pass to F3, they can get a rebound, or F1 can come in, take that shot at the pad, and F3 can slam it home. So again, F1 can come and make that pass to F2, can take a shot, and F3 and F1 will come in and jam for it, or F1 can come in, take that rebound shot, and F3 can slam at home. And the three on two mid lane drive. So it provides puck carrier more options. And before entering the offensive zone, players must get the puck outside of the ice. And the D must respect outman situation, back off and allow the entry. So they're not gonna have enough speed and they're gonna out. So in fact, we have to play tight defense. And once the puck is to one side or the other, the middle attack player drives hard to the net. So the middle player has to use the speed and drive hard to the net. If we do not drive to the net, guess what? We're not going to get that scoring chance or the rebound. Um, F2 drives mid ice seam on inside shoulder of D2. And from that D2 back eights, the prime scoring area. And the middle drive completely neutralizes the defender's ability to get involved in what now has turned into a two on one. Okay. So from all that, I know it's a lot of information, but if we're paying attention to that, guys, okay, we we got to be we got to ensure um, that we're doing this correctly because if we're not, and we're not gonna get this two on one, and we need that two on one, okay. So we got to get their D defensive players and offensive players attracted to us, and we got to be wide and spaced. And the far side winger, which is F three moves to the middle of the ice shooting area close to the player with the puck. And F1 has the option to drive and shoot with F2 going to the net. F2 can tip or chance to shoot, or F3 can receive the pass and then shoot. And it allows the score from the perfect area, which is the perfect area is usually the high slot. So we'll explain that. So we have the three and two mid lane. So I'll show you what exactly is going on here, okay? So, F1's coming in with the puck. Okay, so F1 can either shoot for that rebound and F2 can jam at home, okay? Or, so F2's always driving that net. 
okay? Now, F2, okay, so F2 is going to the net, okay? Does everyone understand that? I hope, so I just wanna make sure everyone's on the same page. So F2 is always driving the net no matter what. So F2, F1 will come in with the, F1 will come in with the puck while F2 is driving the net. We'll look for that rebound shot or for F2 the jam home or F1 will skate in with the puck and shoot and F2 will get it. Or F1 can make that pass to F3 who's coming over and then F3 can take that shot from high slot and then F1 and F2 will be there to screen and get that rebound. While battling with the opponent's D. And then we had the three on two triple drive. So all three players drive deep. We have to drive deep. If we even have one player that's not driving deep, guess what? It's not going to work. And the puck carrier, which is F1 in this case, takes a wide, takes the puck wide with lots of speed. And the middle ice attacker, which is F2, continues to drive to the net. F3 attacks to the net. And the player with the puck, which is F1, presses hard toward the net, driving the outside D and cutting in hard. And by doing this, it creates separation and chances to make a variety of plays or take shots against the prime scoring areas. So what this means, we can get a lot of opportunities from the prime scoring area. And guess what? We're going to score from that most likely because we're going to have enough space to shoot the puck. Um, F2 and F3 drives hard to allow F1 more space to work with. And if F1 is skating down here, she will be in a better position to shoot and make a play from having the puck on the forehand. So also, I, with all the plays we've talked about so far in this chapter, uh, there, the defensive zone, you know, our opponent's D can also screen their own goalie, which helps because we can get that goalie will not be able to see. And we can make that perfect shot. We can look for those open lanes and take the shot and put the puck in the net. So in this case, okay, like we talked about, F1 is coming in, driving wide. So it's going to make a pass uh, to F2, okay? Uh, it can either make a pass. Well, F3 and F2 is coming in, going hard to the net, okay? So F1 can, well, in this play, you can pass if, there's, if the D is coming back more. But in this scenario, we want the F1 to carry the puck the whole time. So F2 is just going right in after F1 comes in. F3 is going to the net as well. Those 2D will be there, and it leaves F1 alone while these back checkers are coming back. So F1 will come in wide, okay? And that will allow more space like we talked about. So F1 will come in with the puck, okay? And they could shoot from any area. But we got to be aware of the back checker is coming back too, so we want to take that quick shot and the, the, the middle ice usually. Uh, so if we're skating down, like we talked about, we can be in a better position. So if we come down right here, we can go up, make a play, take a shot. We gotta look for what little small areas are open to shoot that puck in. And then we have the three on two uh, drive and delay. So the player driving outside with the puck, with the puck looks as if he or she will drive the puck hard toward the net. And at the right moment, the player pivots or turns tight or tight turn uses tight turns and skates back toward the blue line. And from this, it delay it delays creates time and space to make the next move. So for them, they're not gonna have enough time, or the defensive team, they're not gonna have enough time to the adjust to this. They're gonna be overthinking and they're gonna be out of position. And they're, we're going to have a lot of space to work with because they're going to be out of position. And the defender will give space because he or she is afraid to deep drive. And this will take a second or two to react to the delay, which is give us more time to generate scoring opportunities. But F1 must sell the drive to the net. So they must, what it means sell is they must go and drive to the net. They must be used to doing that and they must do it. F2 and F3 are crashing the net as well. And the D are moving up. So. I'll explain this. So where is it here? Come on. So I'll just explain it. So we have F1. Excuse me. Sometimes it's not working. But um, so we have the D moving up as well. So our puck here in this place, okay. So F1 has puck K okay, skating in. Okay, we'll make a tight turn. Okay, we'll either we'll pass that forward coming in. So we have a bunch of options, like I just said, F1 can come in, skate, make a tight turn, and make that pass to F3 that cuts in. 
and then F2 is always driving the net, so uh, F3 can take that shot while F2 is screening, or F2 or F1 can make that pass to the D while F2 and F3 go to the net, and net D can take that slap shot, and F2 and F3 are there to dig for the rebound. F1 will be there in high slot to get that high slot rebound, and we'll take a quick shot from that. And then we had the press and pull play. So this is the middle drive offensive play, which is F2 in this scenario, drives to the net. And they don't stay in front of the net. They need to pull away and find a shooting soft spot toward the side of the net where F1 is turning. So that soft spot is open space. And as F1 turns, he or she need, needs to make a quick pass, quick inside pass to F2. And this is very effective because it drives the defender to the net and creates separation from this defender who is reluctant to leave the front of the net. So the D, guess what? The D are tight to the net with their players. Number one, their goalie are not going to see the puck. Number two, we have more time and space to work with the puck with. So that way we can work, get them moving side to side a little bit, and then we can make a quick shot and play from there. And this play develops better and harder shots for grading scoring opportunities. So I'll just show you how this works. Um, so F1, okay, will come in. Um, so they can either, they'll make a tight turn right down here by the red line. Okay, then we'll make that pass to F2. Uh, F2 will make that go in a little bit. Uh, make the moves, okay, and shoot it. And while F2, okay, or while F3, excuse me, drives the net. So in this play, like I said, to clarify a little more, go into a little detail. F1's coming in, turning, okay, and while F1's doing that. F2 needs to come down, make that quick, tight turn, get open, get away from the steam, get open. F1 can make that pass and get a quick shot or make that rebound shot, and then F3 can put that home, that puck in the net. Or F2 can look for that perfect shot. Well, you're not going to have a lot of time to do it, but good. Or F2 can make a quick pass F3 and they, he or she can tip it in. And offsides. Okay, guys, you guys know what you guys got to know what offside is. So this happens when a player goes over the offensive blue line before the puck enters the zone. All players must wait for the puck to cross the blue line before everyone enters the offensive zone. So let's repeat this. Okay, let's repeat this phrase. The puck must go over the blue line first before everybody can come in. The puck must go over the blue line first before everybody can come in. The puck must come over the blue line first before everyone can come in. And by, when I say everyone, that means our team. So let's just say I have the puck, okay? The rest of the teammates would have to wait. You, you want to be sure you don't put yourself offside because if you go in you're first and then the puck, that's an offside. The puck has to cross that blue line going to the offensive zone first before our teammates can enter, and we have to be quick. And offsides comes from selfish possession of the puck or lazy actions. Okay, so offsides usually is not paying attention to detail or just being lazy. And opponents can have a positional influence on offsides because they can, they're going to use that four check on us from the counters and regroups. So remember that four check. They're going to, with the breakout maybe, like we talked about with the counter, counters, regroups, and breakouts, when we talked about a little bit of the four check, but not too much, they're going to end up putting pressure on us, and that could cause us offside. So their D and offensive players will be chasing us one-on-one. -on -one. And offsides are created by the team with the puck instead of the team without the puck. So the team with the puck will be considered offside if – so let's just say a couple of my teammates are over the blue line before I even enter with the puck. That's an offside. So everyone had to come out the blue line before I won with the puck. So we got to make sure the puck goes in our, our zone first. Now in our defensive zone, we don't have to worry about that because that could be offsides for them, our, the opponents. But when we're trying to score going in that zone, we have to have the puck cross the zone first, and we got to make sure we understand that. Um, so activating the defenseman into offensive zone entries, okay? So 1D should follow up as a late wave option or one of the three attacking players. So like we talked about in the regroups and counters, 1D should come up and be in part of the offensive uh, rush. It's very important to have D in the rushes because they're the ones that are farthest back in our defensive zone. They can generate that more speed. 
and the D should join and stay in the rush from the breakout neutral zone and read the quality of the puck position at the offensive blue line. And from this, it results in more odd man rushes, and we can get up the ice quicker than the other team back checks. And D creates confusion to the opponents, and those opponents should try to figure out their coverage on the back check. So, like I say, those oppo our opponents, they're going to be tired back checking. They're going to stay longer than we are. Then that way we start after, and then we come up the offensive zone. So we don't want to make sure everybody's down too low as well. We want to make sure we have a couple people back because there's going to be people cherry picking and try to look for those stretch plays. We got to cover. We have to have two people cover our thing. So let's just say D1 goes down. So if left wing is closer up to his position, his or her position, F1 would, or left wing would come back and cover that position while D1's in there. Um, we got to make sure we have defense in the back. Now, we want our D to rush because they're going to generate a lot of speed and they're going to feel confident moving the puck up the ice and envisioning what the play is going to be. We got to read who the puck carrier's play as well. But we got to make sure we have people we have to defend our the neutral zone and our defensive zone as well. And we have a video here for you guys, so just click on the link. Um, and watch it, and that will clarify a lot of stuff. And guys, I know it's it's probably a little confusing right now, but when we go on the ice with all this information we apply, it's going to be a lot easier when we do it and then visual. And we'll talk about this at our film sessions throughout the year too that we're going to have. So just make sure if you guys have any questions, okay, please get out to me. We can either video chat. We can, you can meet me at the ice arena uh, and get this done. Uh, ask questions, sit there with me. All the, it's up to you. I'll have office hours. You can call me. We can do whatever you want. I will make. Sure, I want to make sure you understand this information going forward because on your tests and stuff, you're going to have to make sure you understand all this stuff. Um, and making sure watching the videos too, that's very important because it'll help you guys and there's a different view of perspective. So again, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And if you're confused, read it again. Uh, look over the PowerPoints as many times as you need to and watch this video as many times in other lectures, okay? All right, guys, I'm good work, and I will see you next class. And again, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to get a hold of me, okay? All right, take care, guys.